So if we're going um, we're going to start looking towards realism and practicality a little bit more. One of the things, obviously, you've got to accept with striking um, striking drills is that again, we tend to throw a punch and then there's a certain amount of compliance, whether you you know whether we acknowledge it or not. No one really throws a punch and leaves their arm there. We do it when we're training because it gives your partner a body to train with, and I fully accept that. But in real life, you know, anyone with any training is going to throw it and bring it back, or even the drunk person, it's going to be a multiple flailing, you know, it's not going to be one attack. So you've got to make sure you're following your core principles of getting off the line, taking the balance, and then doing something that's appropriate. That still applies, okay? Um, so you're committed. This is, you know, this, this kind of towards the, either the head or to the temple, depends on where you were taught. But it's still effectively a straight line. This is coming through. So this is actually a lot easier to deal with than a cross. Can I borrow you, Jason, please? So if, if uh, Jason just throws a, a yokamen, I mean, Aye! you know, I, it's still effectively like a sword strike, it's a straight line. So I have all of this angle that I can predictively stop just by aligning my body to a certain extent. Obviously, we there's other stuff involved. If he throws a, a, a cross or a roundhouse or whatever you want to call it, and I do this, look. If I miss that angle even slightly, this is going to get through the guard. If I go in too deep, it's going to go around the back. If I hit here, it quite often leaves me too far off. So this is a completely... It's subtle, but it's a completely different kettle of fish. There's lots of differences to this, and this is why it's valuable to train it. Because if you've done your however many years of Aikido against Yokerman, and someone squares up to you in a pub car park and throws a throws a, and you you know you do your fancy, you're going to get walloped. So I think it's important that we acknowledge this and we train to it. So if I'm going to the inside, I've either got to make sure I make some entrance. So I'm stopping this earlier, which isn't always possible. Or if I'm going back, to, I've got to make sure I'm getting, I'm going with it, and I'm using my body movement to get myself out of range. There's other solutions. You can use ukinagashi, of course, so, and sweep it out the way. You know, I mean, just slow it down, just so. So you're making a curved, curved block. Body movement is turning it out the way, and then you're taking. So I want you guys to have a play. Anything from Yokomanuchi, any technique you've got from Yokomanuchi, do it from whatever you want to call this, a roundhouse or a haymaker or a hook or a cross or whatever, you know. Um, try and make sure you deal with the strike first. You know, don't kind of just float straight into technique. Make sure you're dealing with the strike first, take the balance, then do something, you know. There's a lovely Arimi from here. If you get in tight, bang. Pull this down, and you've already got the cover and the control. Bit of a bounce, a favourite. Okay, have a play. Ashimasta. Thank you.